your gel manicure could be putting you at risk for cancer. And you won't believe what item in your doctor's office is full of germs. Dr. Melissa Lem is here to break down some of the headlines making the rounds in the medical world. Dr. Lem, welcome back to the show. Thank you. So let's start with our first topic. This comes from a headline out of the New York Times talking about a doctor's white coat possibly being contaminated with superbugs. What should we be worried about here? Right, well, this, this story refer refers to a review of about 72 studies that showed to up to 16% of doctors' lab coats can be contaminated with a superbug called MRSA, and then up to 42% can have a bug called gram-negative rods that is associated with a lot of hospital-acquired infections. And the funny thing is we doctors know that these coats are dirty, right? About 80% of doctors in a recent study also said we should be washing them weekly, but only 40% of them do, and only 40% of them wash them once a month, and 17% never. So we could be carrying around some pretty yucky stuff. That is so gross. So what should doctors and patients keep in mind? Right, well, doctors should be washing their lab coats preferably daily, and if not that, then weekly. Um, doctors should also keep in mind this bare below the elbows policy, because if you're using hand sanitizer, you can't really sanitize your sleeves. Um, so try to keep, you know, keep your, your uh, sleeves high. And then patients, if you're in the hospital, if you see a doctor with a lab coat and you're worried, essentially just ask them to take it off and sanitize their hands before they examine you. Our next topic is about skin cancer. When we think of skin cancer, we don't normally think of getting our nails done, but many women get manicures and there's the UV lights that can cure the nail polish. Where should our concern be? Should we be worried? That's right. So, the, you know, there's a debate about that. But when we think about skin cancer, essentially we think about spots on your visible skin. But there's also skin under your nails. And up to 3.5% of melanomas can happen under your fingernails and under your toenails. So there have been some case report, reports in women, um, older women who frequently use these UV nail dryers, showing that, um, that they can have developed skin cancers on the backs of their hands. But there have been some follow-up analyses done that show that, you know, about 10 minutes of uh, nail drying time is equivalent to the amount that's recommended of UVA radiation by um, people who work outdoors, what you should get in one day. Um, so anyway, the, there's a debate about whether or not it's significant. Okay, so what should we keep in mind? Well, if you do have a family history of skin cancer, if you are at higher risk, then think about wearing sunscreen all the time. You know, when you're at your nail appointment, in your car, when you're driving, um, just be sure that you're protected. And then you can also think about using um, fan-based dryers instead of those UV-based ones. Okay, the World Health Organization recently issued some guidelines for screen time for kids. What are they? Well, what they say are guidelines that are fairly consistent with Canadian ones, which is that if you're under two, you shouldn't be getting any regular screen time. And then if you're between two to five, no, less than one hour of regular screen time per day. Okay, what about uh, things like looking at maps or video chats? Because I, I know like we FaceTime my parents a lot back home in Alberta. Does that also count as screen time? Right, well, the key is that that's more interactive. So when we think about this kind of recreational screen time, it's sitting and just watching a movie or playing with an app. That's not, that's not interactive. And kids learn by interacting with their world. They learn by playing, they learn by talking with other people, picking up things and moving them. So screen time essentially displaces that time they would have to learn in the real world. Doctor, thank you so much for coming in. A lot of headlines recently, and we appreciate your insight.